He's not a bird, he's not a plane, but he is Captain America's good pal and fellow Avenger. We're talking about Falcon, because your geek history lesson on the Falcon, Sam Wilson, is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Kaka Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or Avenger from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And Jason, I think you've made that Kaka joke before. Oh yes it is because that of course, as everyone knows on the internet, that's the sound a falcon makes. I think that's the sound a robin makes. Uh, sure. Let's just say every bird that uh, that's my just my bird sound. If we're going to do something bird, it's gonna be <laughs> you know, Big Bird says that on Sesame Street all the time. He has that famous song. Uh, um, you know, it's not so easy being caca. Ah, I see. Yes. Uh, Ashley, why are we talking about Sam Wilson, the Falcon? Well, we're trying this year to hit on some of the big dogs that we haven't covered in our past you five mean big birds. years. Our big birds. Uh, we also did the Hulk, who is a big dog with Mr. J. Washington. And Sam Wilson is a character that we've been trying to get onto the list. And so now seems like the opportune moment to talk about him. So we're oh, doing it right I now. I thought I had to do something with the uh, his Marvel Plus series that's coming right around the corner. Well, yes, but that's not till next year. And I didn't want to point out the time gap between now and then. I don't care. It's on the it's on the horizon. So we should talk about it at the time of this recording. If you're listening to this after that show, wasn't it great or terrible? We don't know. Hello, All right. future people. Hello. Uh, we have a singular TA for this. A singular person has requested Sam Wilson, the Falcon. That is Andrew Lewis or Louis Perry. Thank you so much for suggesting the Falcon. Thank you. Now, before we get into this lesson, we got to talk about some business, guys. Um, I don't know if you know me, you know I'm a veteran. And you know that for the last five years, I have run the Jawin Comic Drive for service members, uh, which has been in this entire internet sphere it's the idea that we are going to send a uh, 15,000 comic books to United States military members that are deployed overseas injured veterans recuperating in hospitals all over the world and some of their family members back home this is the fifth year and of course as always I'm partnering with the amazing organization Operation Gratitude who is responsible for sending care packages overseas now if you've never heard about this campaign where have you been? But if you <laughs> have heard of this campaign, we have sent over 134,000 comic books in care packages to US, U.S. service members. So we're going to continue that tradition this year from November 1st to November 30th. We are looking to send 15,000 comic books to the United States military service members, to the United States military nerds to thank them, uh, you know, because there are nerds in the military. It happens. And these comics can be single issues or graphic novels from any company or genre. Genre, new and gently used only. Please donate comics that are only in good shape. Basically think about it. If you wouldn't read that book, don't give it to a service member. And also, we should keep these donations at PJ13 and lower because some of these will be going to children. Now, all the details for this campaign, all your questions can be answered by going to Jawin Comic Drive for Service Members.com. That's Jawin, J A W I I N comic drive for service members.com that website has frequently asked questions all kinds of things uh just to put this out guys you're not mailing the comic books to me we are mailing the comic books to operation gratitude i am not a ups delivery man uh thank you to all the ups delivery mans that will be taking all these comic books to operation gratitude if you're but, a ups delivery person let us know and we'll shout you out on twitter i think we have a couple uh listeners so i believe it's pretty we cool. do uh real quick if you live in los angeles and you want to donate uh we are teaming up with the amazing comic book shop collector's paradise they have a location in pasadena they have a location in Winnetka, and they have a, uh, a location in north hollywood you can drop your comic books off there they will take them to operation gratitude for you and to let you know we're having a big kickoff event at collector's paradise in north hollywood we're still finalizing the details so you want to check our social medias it will be either november 9th or november 10th now why is that weekend important ashley well that would be veterans day weekend what? veterans day of course being it's november like we 11th this. yes <laughs> um so it will be from noon to 5 p.m we're again we're still finalizing the date 
at Collector's Paradise. So you want to make sure you follow Collector's Paradise on social media. Follow us on social media. We'll have all the stuff there. We're going to have some big name comic book artists there. You can come meet your comic book artists. You can come meet us. And if you donate 20 comics or more, these artists are going to give you a sketch. Woo. So it's a big kickoff. It's the first year we've ever done that. So I'm really excited about that. So everybody, please donate to the Jawan Comic Drive for service members. It's our way that we can give a thank you to all the service members, the nerdy service members out there. And I expect I want us to blow the number out of the water this year, especially since we're teaming with the amazing Collector's Paradise in North Hollywood and all their locations. So Jawan Comic Drive for service members.com will have information on the Geek Hair Shows and Socials, the information on my social. Ash will have maybe some information on her socials. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, they'll all be there, guys. So let's blow the number out of the water. Let's give way above 15,000 comic books this year in the month of November. Yeah, let's so. do it for all the people like Sam Wilson and all the people like Jason Inman. That's right. Uh, well, Sam Wilson is a veteran depending on which version of your story that you read. So that is a perfect transition into the 10 cent origin of Sam Wilson. Ashley, what what dat? What dat? The Ten Cent Origin is the first part of our podcast where we explain all the who's it's and what's it's and creators in case you ever go to an Avengers themed cocktail party and someone asks you, hey, who's that Falcon guy? Yes, uh, Falcon is Samuel Thomas, quote unquote, Sam Wilson. He's also been known as Falcon, Captain America, Snap Wilson, Blackwing, and Blackbird. He, of course, is a Marvel comic superhero created by Stan Lee and Gene Colan. Gene Colan is a comic book creator that does not get enough credit. His first appearance was in Captain America number 117 in September of 1969, same year as the moon landing. His team affiliations and partnerships have been Steve Rogers, Red Wing, Bucky Barnes, Avengers, all of the Shields, Defenders, Heroes for Hire, Mighty Avengers, Avengers Unity Squad. And his abilities are he is an excellent bird trainer. Ooh. Mm. He's a skilled martial artist and gymnast. He can fight via a wing harness. He has an empathic link with his pet falcon and many other falcons. He has limited control over birds and the ability to see through the eyes of any of the avian creatures, a.k.a. birds, nearby. And he's been portrayed in live action by Anthony Mackie. Now, do you think we have any bird trainers who listen to this podcast? Oh, I please hope so. I I'm, hope I'm so. Call you Miss, I hope we have some falconers among us. Yeah, there you go. Uh, now we're going to move into the meet cute. Yes, the meet cute is the part of the podcast where we stole a term from romantic comedy writing and we told you where we first meet to did a character and how cute it was. Ashley. Jason. Where did you first? Ca-ca! The Falcon. That's a tough question because I don't know if I ever really read a Sam Wilson focused story before he became a part of the Avengers. I knew who he was. He was in a couple of Avengers events. But for me, it was really when Anthony Mackie was cast that I started learning more about the character. And then I've gone back and read some of his stories before then. But a lot of it really hinged on the Marvel Winter Soldier movie. Nice. So how about you? Where did you first meet Sam Wilson? Wizard Magazine? No, you don't 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 say wizard. That's kind of, don't don't put Wizard Magazine down. It no, was a, it's just it's you know it was it's, a fine fine publication. Look, back wizard in the day. Magazine is on the bingo card, yeah. and it's often your answer. Yeah, don't be don't be. I am not in any way leaning, disparaging Wizard Magazine. We don't need to, to to tilt their bingo the GHL bingo card where they can find where Ashley. Uh, you can find it on. Uh, you got to scroll back through our socials. It's or, there. Yeah. <laughs> Or uh, on Patreon, it's pinned up. Yeah, you don't, need to, you, don't need to, you don't need to cheat their bingo card. We'll get to it eventually. No. <laughs> no, uh, we're going to go back to the year of 1996. Classic year. Um, there's a little event. little, not really event, but a little imprint called Heroes Reborn. Mm. This is where Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld took over the four mainstay Marvel comic books, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and what's the fourth one? I can't remember now. It's killing Captain America because <laughs> none of them were selling. Not a. They were all in the tube. Did anyone have feet? Uh, I mean, Rob Liefeld only drew two of them, so yes. <laughs> um, and Falcon shows up in the Avengers run and kept the Captain America run in there. That's how that was the, my first exposure to Falcon. Yes, so. and for listeners who aren't familiar, Jason, really, uh, that's a, that event is a very special place in your heart. I would have never read those characters without that event. Yeah. So uh, Jim Lee and Jim Lee's art brought me in. So there you go. Hat tip to Jim Lee. All right, so let's go to the History 101 of Sam Wilson. The main meat of the lesson where Professor Jason is going to lay down everything you need to know about Sam Wilson right now. All right, first we're going to hop into some publication history. Let's do it. Co-creator Gene Collins said this 
about Sam Wilson's creation in the Marvel Masterworks Captain America Volume 4. And I quote, In the late 1960s, when the news of the Vietnam War and civil rights protests were regular occurrences, and Stan Lee, always wanting to be at the forefront of things, started bringing these headlines into the comics. One of the biggest steps we took in the direction came in Captain America. I enjoyed drawing people of every kind. I drew as many different types of people as I could into the scenes I illustrated, and I loved drawing black people. I always found their features interesting. So much of their spirit and strength and wisdom was written on their faces. So I approached Stan, as I remember, with the idea of introducing an African-American hero, and he took to it right away. I looked at several African-American magazines and used them as the basis of inspiration for bringing Sam Wilson and the Falcon to life. So that's the words of Gene Colan here. So uh, thank you, Gene Colan, for creating a what I'm going to say is a great Marvel character. I will definitely agree with that. And I will say that I think that's very interesting. And um, I, I have gone back and looked at some of the early Sam Wilson stories during that Captain America run. And if you look at the crowd or you look at some of the supporting characters, it is shockingly diverse for yeah. the time, which is really cool. Now, there's one thing that we know about all Marvel superheroes, and that is that they must all come from New York City. You got God, God forbid they came from literally anywhere else. And Sam Wilson was born in Harlem. Fun fact, uh, Sam Wilson is not actually named on page until five pages into his first story ever. <laughs> so, uh, there All you go. right. Well done, Stan. <laughs> yeah. Living in Harlem, Sam Wilson immediately formed a deep emotional bond with a wild falcon named Red Wing. Mm. Uh, fun fact, uh, Red Wing actually gets named before Sam Wilson does in the actual comic. Yeah, and you know, uh, yeah. wild peregrine falcons being so common in Harlem, yep. New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sam's father, Paul, was a minister, and he was tragically killed for coming in between rival gangs when Sam was nine years old. But the tragedy did not end there for Sam, because this is comic books, and his mother, Darlene, was killed by a mugger soon after she used her body to protect her children. Now, Sam does have a brother named Gideon, who decided to follow in his father's footsteps and become a minister himself, of course, because he has a very religious name. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashley, um, let's talk about this. Okay. okay. So we have the dead father. Yes. And then they decided to double down and get <laughs> dead mama too. Um, do all superheroes slash Disney characters need, because Samuel says now a Disney character, did all superheroes... Oh God, you're not even wrong. Yep, did all superheroes slash Disney characters need... Do they need to have their parents die tragically? Like, because I mean, let's be honest here. It started with Batman and Superman. I was going to say DC kind of yeah. set this really weird. But Batman's standard. the classic dead parents. But I mean, yeah. Do all superheroes need to have dead parents? Uh, do they need to? Maybe not. Um, there is part of me that feels like it's a little bit of a double down with both of the parents. A little much, right? Uh, little dying. Much. Yeah. You know, and then Sam and Gideon are like left alone to sort of raise themselves in Harlem. And you're like, uh, OK, mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary. Actually, for Sam, I don't think it really informs that much of his character. I don't think it does either. It's not something that gets referenced a, a, a lot. So I think for Sam, it's unnecessary. But we know a lot of early Marvel stuff, like a lot of early DC stuff, was a little paint by numbers. So maybe they were like, well, we got to kill the parents. So we're, we're set in Harlem. So let's kind of do what a typical or what, you know, what people would assume would be typical deaths for these characters. I'm going to say this. I think Sam would be the exact same character if both of his parents we're alive. I think so, too. I, I think the important thing about Sam is that he has the drive mm -hmm. to accomplish tasks. And it's interesting, before I did the research for this episode, I had no idea that Sam came from a very religious family. And to be honest with you, that is something that I would like to see some modern writers bring into his story. It is referenced super, super briefly um, in a run that we will get to, I'm sure, uh, when Sam becomes Captain America. Oh, yeah. Because he has no money, so it. we go and see Gideon at yeah, his yeah. church. But it's not a huge plot point. Um, I would like to see Gideon on screen, though. Mm -hmm. I think that could be really fun. Well, also, even think about it in the context of the live action Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. um, what an interesting flavor it would bring to Anthony Mackie's portrayal if they portray Sam as slightly religious, because in that universe, again, w our characters talk to Thor. Yes, yeah. Um, Fight Loki. And there aren't really that many religious 
characters. We know Captain America's. Uh, we know uh, Steve is religious. We know Steve is religious, but that's about it. But they only use Steve's religion to kind of make fun of that. He's like he's kind of um, um, old worldy. Yeah, I, I couldn't come up with a better word than that. Me- Methodist. The, the, I don't know. No, no. I was gonna say um, kind of like what you would call Clark Kent. He's very um, calm and kind of white bread. Yeah, yeah. You know, but. To be honest with you, the odds are that more than one Avenger would be religious. Just, just or have, statistically, yes. Or have beliefs or spirituality. Or some kind of faith, yeah. Sam would be a great character for that. Sure, why not? So. Give Sam more to do. That's yeah, always fine I'm by me. I'm down for that. Um, so Sam began his, life, began his life of adventure answering an ad for a hunting falcon to help out in the tropics. And this group who posted this ad deemed themselves the Exiles. No, not that Exiles with X-Men characters led by Blink. You can request that episode at any time, please. I'd love to teach it. But these, <laughs> these Exiles... You're not the ones Small X Were soon revealed To be Nazis Working for none other Than Captain America Main straight villain The Red Skull Mm. Now Sam wanted to Inspire the local Villagers to rise up And fight the Nazis And rise up Like Hamilton But Red Skull And his henchmen Pit him Against his ongoing Nemesis Captain America And because Captain America Can inspire Anybody to do Anything at any time He gives Sam A speech and urges Sam to put on a costume and protect his identity, and then Sam becomes the hero known as the Falcon. Dun, dun, dun. Now, actually, um, this transition was quite difficult because Sam had been placed under some mind control by the Red Skull, and he wasn't actually completely unable to shake the influence of the Red Skull, despite uh, Sam Wilson knowing what he believed was right or wrong. But fun fact, it was actually uh, T'Challa, Black Panther, who built Sam's first winged harness using advanced Wakandan tech. I think that is really, really cool because Black Panther was probably the only black hero that was kicking around the Marvel Universe at this time. Well, remember, uh, Black Panther is one of the first black superheroes yes. ever. And so, we have discussed in the past with some of the other firsts that... And uh, I believe Black Panther is 64 or 65. Mm-hmm. And this is 69. Yeah. So, I just yeah. think there weren't a ton of African or African American characters True. at the time. But I do think because Black There's Panther... It's also pre-Storm. Yep. Comes from Wakanda that it's really cool that he builds the same harness. I think that's neat. I know we couldn't do it in the cinematic universe just because of the timeline, but I thought that was cool. Now, Captain America and Sam Wilson are basically entwined from here on out, basically through most of the 70s, where they kind of deal with uh, street level crime in New York City. And their partnership actually became so popular that the title Captain America was renamed Captain America and the Falcon. Starting with issue 134. So it was Captain America at issue 133. Then it became Captain America and the Falcon at 134. And it stayed that way from Captain America 134 to 192. And then from 194 to 222. So from February of 1971 to June of 1978. Now, there's a whole bunch of issues here that basically are Cap and Falcon, you know, fighting sci-fi concepts social issues, and of course the old standard, the Nazis. But there's one Falcon and Captain America story that I want to focus on. Okay. Mad Bomb. Okay. (laughs) Ashley, have you ever heard of this story? Literally never. Well, see, Ashley, this was during the brief window, the very, very brief window, where it was renamed Captain America for one issue. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, and, and this and then is it became, why? Well, it's one issue. It's a one uh-huh. issue, and then it became Captain America and Falcon. And the reason for that is, is because there was a new writer that came on. And when he came on, he wanted to be Captain America. And then I think Marvel convinced them, like, no, let's call it Captain America Falcon. That's what it's been called for, like, the last 60 issues. People let's go like Falcon. <laughs> so it went back. But this writer is a man that you might know, Ashley. He goes by the name of Jack Kirby. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. He's got them eyebrows. Uh, Who is this guy, Ashley? Uh, Jack Kirby, perhaps all-time legendary great artist of, and and architect, really, of the Marvel Universe. Uh, Some would say deserving more credit for some of the creations of things like Fantastic Four than Stan Lee, but that's, of course, up for debate. And notably creator of the fourth world nonsense over at DC, which we are big fans of here on the podcast. And inspiration for Detective Turpin. In the uh, DC Universe. Yes. Well, you missed, I think, the most important one on here. Jack Kirby's the co-creator of Captain America. Also that. Um, this is one of the few Marvel creations that Stan Lee 
is no not the part co- of. Yes, this is a this is a, a Jack Simon or a Joe Simon, excuse me, and Jack Kirby creation. So this is him returning to a character that he created without Stan Lee. So um, in his first issue ever, we meet Captain America and Falcon just arm wrestling in a kitchen. Then, <laughs> yep, yep, they're arm wrestling in a kitchen, and then they suddenly go mad and they start thumping on each other. When they get outside, they learn that the entire town has gone crazy, like the Red Knight in Return of the Archons, the Star Trek, the original hey, series. Hey, there's a reference. Google it. Um, and eventually, they they in their investigation, it leads them to confront a real human being that was actually real in night in the 1970s. That is Henry Kissinger. Oh boy, that man was a treat, wasn't Ashley, he? Ashley, do you know who this American po- politician and figure is? Um, I don't really know him beyond. I know that people think he's really evil. Um, he's probably most famous as. I mean, he's 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 a. I know what he looks like. I've seen people do impressions of. Yes, him. and he talks down here. Yeah. Like this. Um, he has basically. He's probably most famously known as he was Richard Nixon, the Secretary of State. Okay. So he would. I didn't know he was Secretary of State, yeah. Secretary of he, Defense. He's actually been a cup. He's been involved with a couple presidential administrations, but like most famously, I would say is Rich Nixon, Nixon's Secretary of State, um, which is who he was uh-huh. when this story was published. Okay. So and it is weird when real politicians come into comics. Fictional uh, world. Yeah, yes. Death in the Family does it. It's weird. Yes. Now, so Captain America and Falcon talk to Henry Kissinger. Sure, why not? And he, of course, knows what's going on, and he tells them about <laughs> the Mad Bombs. Now, there are three <laughs> mad bombs. Okay. One is Peanut, which transmits hellish waves and makes citizens of a small town go mad. That is word for word from the comic book. There's the second bomb, which is a little bit bigger, mm. Dumpling. Now, Dumpling is what caused the ruckus that Falcon and Cap saw. Mm-hmm. And then there's the biggest mad bomb, and the biggest mad bomb is Big Daddy. Which will drive the entire United States mad. Okay. Now, Ashley, if you don't know this, this is fine. Do you understand the very obvious riff on history that Kirby is playing with here? I'm pretty sure that the name of those bombs are the same names as the A-bombs that America dropped. Not the same. but, but the, they're, Or they're similar? Yeah, he's riffing on them because the two nuclear bombs that America dropped on Japan were Fat Man and Little Boy. That's yeah. So you can tell that that's obviously where he's pulling from. Um, anyways, um, K- K- Jack Kirby's cap run is bonkers. <laughs> um, so go read it for yourself. Um, and there's a later a time travel scene where Captain America meets Benjamin Franklin. Uh, I'm going to save that for yourself. But I, I, I wanted to talk about <laughs> Mad Bomb because yeah. it's, it's one of those Captain America and Falcon stories that's kind of legendary. And, I, and again, I don't even want to ruin where it goes. You should definitely read this bonkers story. Fun fact, Kirby writes, draws. Awesome. And edits himself. You can't edit yourself. Well, he does. Uh, I'm gonna That's probably this, why the story's insane. I don't know if this is in your recommended reading. If it's not, I it will. Is, it is. I will whack this in there to make yep. sure that people can get their hands. There's on a it. giant omnibus of uh, Captain America in by Jack Kirby. By Jack Kirby, but I think I I found the trade. Of cool, Mad cool, Bomb, cool. So it's kind of out of print, but you can find it. You, you can find it for sure. But we got to talk about Falcon. This is not the Captain America. That's episode. right. Yeah. I Even, bet Steve's gonna show up a couple more times. Though, he probably will. Because Sam was all over the Steve episode. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, Sam Wilson just kind of becomes a background character until about June 1975 when legendary comic book writer Steve Englehart who uh, most famously wrote a run of West Coast Avengers dun 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 got a little twang in there I believe that is another bingo card <laughs> uh, he actually um, kind of fleshes Sam out a little bit makes him a real human being um, under Englehart's pen Sam Wilson becomes a social worker and decides to help inner city youth now this is sort of reflected in the first time we meet Sam in Winter Soldier in the Marvel Cinematic Universe when he's working for a veterans group now Sam uh, the reason for his work with inner city youth is because it is also revealed that Sam Wilson used to work with the New York mob when he was younger and he's a bit of a criminal himself and when he worked for the mob he took on the name of snap Wilson it is later retconned that snap Wilson was a persona entirely constructed by the Red Skull when he was using the cosmic cube to mind control Sam and send him against Cap way back during that very first adventure. Remember the very first adventure uh-huh. I said Red Skull took control of him? Um, so I kind of think that this is all kind of hooey, hooey, and you should kind of ignore it. But um, we're going to learn that, you know, several years after Cap died and came back the first time, 
The Red Skull unsuccessfully attempted to revive this Snap Wilson mob persona to try to put Steve Rogers in that old dirt nap once and for all, as they would say in the mob. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so Steve, uh, when he came back to life this time, we're going to talk about Captain America's death a couple of times in this uh, episode. Yeah, because so he's ready. died like a hundred times. Yeah, he keeps dying and coming back. <laughs> and basically, Steve had died this time. He comes back. He takes the mantle of Captain America from a dude named Roscoe. Uh, look it up. You definitely want to know about the adventures of Captain Roscoe. It's awful. Yep, Captain Roscoe Truly here. awful. Whoop. An awful footnote in Captain Hell America history. Hell yeah, I'm here for some Coors Light, some Buffalo Bills, and the American Dream. I'm Captain Roscoe. <laughs> All right. I'm, my real name is Roscoe Willerman. I'm you the know, brother well, of Tex. You know, Roscoe, <laughs> that's really interesting because I was going to say you sound an awful lot like our friend Tex. Well, he's my older brother. I'm Roscoe. If you would like this year's uh, holiday special to be Roscoe and Tex talking to each other, please request that at GHL Podcast. Yeehaw. I think I should make a note about Roscoe Willerman. <laughs> uh, somebody should make a note about that because I don't have the hands I'll to. Ashley, please. Fine. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, Roscoe Willerman, or Captain Roscoe, um, basically Sam at this time stepped up and he went on to lead the first of his many teams, the S.H.I.E.L.D. Super Agents, which is a team that no one remembers. Um, these are a team of superpowered operatives consisting of the heroes Blue Streak, Marvel Man, Texas Twister, the Vamp, and the Falcon. Fun fact, Texas Twister is uh, Roscoe Willerman's <laughs> Stripper uh, name? Dance hall name. <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't throw him down to the level. That he part. could make a lot of money. I'm sure he's a great yep. dancer. Now, um, you've never heard of this team, as I said. Doesn't matter. Sam led the second team. Cap led the first team of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Super Agents. And this was basically a S.H.I.E.L.D. run strike team, kind of like the Secret Warriors. Now, uh, Ashley, I want to talk to you about this. We yeah. talked a lot about the inner city youth and Sam's mob history mm-hmm. and stuff like this. Uh-huh. And Snap Wilson. <laughs> um what do you think about the movie's decision to change his backstory from the inner city youth, um, you know, being such a part of the inner city mm. to a veteran? He's a veteran now and, he, and he's about veterans now for the sake of a movie. What do you think about this? Yeah, I'd actually love to know your opinion on this, too, after I give mine. Um, I love this change. I think, do you think it, it's better that he's a veteran. I do think it's yes. better that he's a veteran. Um, and I think that it if you're going to pair him with Captain America the way he has been classically in the comics and the way they are, they, you know, they did in the movie, I think it brings a lot more points of comparison between the two characters if they have the shared experience across time and across ethnicities. I like the version of Sam better when he is a veteran. I, I, I still enjoy him in the comics. I think there is huge value to being a social worker and working with inner city youth, but by a modern standard, I think it's a little obvious for your African-American character who lives in New York to do that type of work. May I say almost cliche? I will. And, and that is because, you know, the character was invented in the 60s. You know, we did a Luke Cage episode. Mm-hmm. We went all into that. Um, I like the veteran update a lot personally. I do too. And especially in sort of a Marvel Cinematic Universe, it makes more sense for Luke Cage to fill that role. Exactly. And also in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it makes more sense that Cap would bond with another veteran. veteran. Yeah, you have a shared experience, mm-hmm. a shared, dare I say, a shared language. Yes, because uh, again, you have to look at the mindset that Cap lost Bucky, mm-hmm. where they're going off comic book Bucky, co- excuse me, comic book Bucky, who's a kid, mm-hmm. or movie Bucky. It's still a soldier he lost, so he would be very unlikely or very game to team up with anybody. Yeah, and if you have this other guy who's like, no, I've been in the the S I H I T with everybody else. Um, I can handle it. He'd be more willing to be like, oh yeah, you're a soldier like me. You have the same training. Great. Oh, yeah, I don't have to worry about. Don't you. have to worry about you. You're gonna cover. You're gonna. You can cover your own butt. Great. Well, even when you think about that first scene in Winter, like on your left, that they're in Washington. Mm-hmm. So like it kind of me. All the symbolism of Cap means the same thing to Sam. There. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So after this, in the late 1970s. Uh, Falcon does what every good mid-tier Marvel superhero does. He joins and unjoins a bunch of different teams. Great. Oh, yeah, get ready, because he's <laughs> going to join the Defenders in issues number 62 to 64 in 1978. And then he's going to join the Avengers in 19, and excuse me, issue 183 to 194 from 1979 to 1980. Yay. Um, <laughs> now, Sam was later recruited by Henry Peter uh 
I've heard Ginrich and Guyrich. How do you say that? I would say Guyrich. I'm going Henry Peter Guyrich, who is typically usually a villain. Yes, in these but roles. no one has said it yet uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's don't been said tweet in an X Men movie. He's in an X Men. Oh, really? He's the guy in the helicopter that Mystique in X Men One uh, beats the crap out of. Well, you know what? I don't remember. So um, we'll say Guy Rich. So uh, uh, he, of course, is a government superhero liaison. He's usually the Avengers liaison to the government. Uh, so he recruits Sam to fill a diversity quota. And Sam recognized right away that he was being tokenized. And of course, Sam resented this, and this ultimately led him to quitting the Avengers. Now, Falcon continues to support Steve Rogers through most of the 90s, uh, rejoining the Avengers very soon. And he basically becomes a stalwart, uh, excuse me, stalwart member of the Avengers, finally stepping into leading the Avengers in 2002. So it takes some time for him to get there. But he does get there, which is more than uh, so much. You know, we talk about a lot of characters Mm -hmm. who are sort of in this mid-tier range who have never led teams. Well, we're also going to talk about um, a little bit. This will go into our discussion question. I want to ask you, Ashley, Mm -hmm. um, here. He's going to lead the all new, all different Avengers when he's Captain America. Yes. Spoilers. Um, What do you think about Sam Wilson leading the Avengers. Do you think Sam Wilson's a good leader? Let me, and then we can even tie this in. Do you think like Sam Wilson will lead the movie Avengers sometime? I think there are very specific versions of Sam Wilson that are well suited to lead the Avengers. Something that I will criticize about Falcon, the character, is depending on who is writing him, he's either very, very capable or he's always a watered down version of Captain America. I like him more when he has a little more autonomy, a little more personality. I like Sam as a potential leader of the Avengers because he feels that same type of character thing for me that like a Wally West or a Dick Grayson does because he's standing in Captain America's shadow. He's trying to make sure that he is as good and as pure as Steve. And then that aside, that he's as charismatic and as thoughtful a leader of the Avengers. And I think that makes for a really interesting storytelling that hits on a lot of things that I like. I think in terms of the movie, you know, if you went back and listened to some of the earlier uh, episodes, because, you know, we started this podcast like right before the Winter Soldier movie came out. And we did. We've gone back and forth a lot about whether we thought it was going to be Bucky or Sam we, to we, take I over. And we, we thought it was towards bu- Bucky. We thought it was going to be Bucky for but a long they, time. Um, I think spoilers again for Avengers Endgame. If you haven't seen the biggest movie of all time, then I'm sorry. Um, you know, but Endgame confirms it's going to be Sam. Yeah, and, and, and to be I honest, think it's right for that universe. I think they've earned it. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense why it's Sam. And I, one of my favorite moments in Endgame is when he takes the shield. Uh, although I'm going to say this, I think Sam, Will, I think movie Sam Wilson is great to be the next leader of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. I think comic book Sam Wilson don't like so much as the leader. Do the you Avengers. think him? Do you like him better as like a lieutenant and like a supporting role to yeah, the leader? Yeah, he, he's a better um, number one XO. Yeah, he's not as um, charismatic in the books, and mm. that's perhaps because Anthony Mackie and I say this is someone who met him for fifteen entire minutes. Is a name very, drop? Yeah, there we go. I'll just pick that back up. That was Anthony Mackie. If you missed that, uh, is a very charismatic, very likable man, and I think that translates to the character as well. That's right. There you go. Now, during his tenure with the Avengers, Sam discovered his telepathic bond with birds extended beyond just Red Wing, his falcon, and allowed him to literally see through the eyes of every bird, as I said in the Tenside Orton. Now, this also led to a weird falcon moment where his wings stopped being metal and they became Hard light hologram wings and the proud tradition of Captain America's energy shield, which I love. Yes. Thank you, Mark Wade. <laughs> I don't know if you know about this, but in the 90s, little sidebar right here in the Heroes Return series, Captain America lost his old shield. He went to the museum and he tried to get the little triangle shield. Mm-hmm. He fought a villain with it. It broke. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. or Tony Stark or Henry Pym or some crazy scientist made him a holographic shield that he had for about 30 issues. And I love it. It should have showed up 
in the movie. I'm actually shocked that we didn't get a version of it in the movie somewhere. Even if it was like a villain trying to use it to fight yeah. Cap and it didn't, you know, it wasn't as effective. I've been told by friends that it, apparently there's a version of it that shows up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But Agents Name, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Names. does not, uh, uh, Too vague. Ex- does not exist in my head canon. Uh, I'll so. echo that. Sorry but, uh, to anybody. Uh, we Agents should share a kid. picture of the legendary holographic S.H.I.E.L.D. Sure, we will. And we'll share the hard light wings as well. They actually, with the right artist, they can look kind of incredible. But I'm sorry, the idea of a hard light anything is silly. Well, it's like the you know the light of the hologram makes it solid. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, it's comic books. It's too silly. It's like look. So before we talked about doing this episode, I didn't know or had deleted from my brain that Sam Wilson had a telepathic bond with birds. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. And I think that's I told you dumb. That. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I I told think you that. that's so dumb. Well, because the, dif- the difference is because in the movies, Red Wing is just a drone. I think, look, and I think for me, the I know we're going off I on think a the tangent. Mo- the movies do a little bit better. I do apologize, but I think the perfect portrayal of Red Wing is somewhere between an actual bird and a drone, maybe like an enhanced bird or something like that. Um, but I just, I think. What's that red wing? <laughs> oh, he's not pleased, Ashley. He's pecking at my head right now. Well, intern Brega will come in and take care oh, of him left. shortly. <laughs> Thank you, red wing. <laughs> please, someone please draw <laughs> Professor Jason with red wing on his head. <laughs> I will send you something. If you do that, I would love that so much. Um, I just, I know there's a lot of silly stuff in comics, and I know here on the show that we go, you know, comics, like, don't worry about it. This, for me, like, it's almost too silly. It is a little silly. Uh, And it's because I think I like Sam Wilson as a more serious character, uh, and I like him being, like, a reflection of a very specific demographic, and the the bird telepathy thing is, like, too much for Ashley. (laughs) Now, when Sam found out these new powers that he could look at any bird, he uncovered the conspiracy that Henry Gyrich had been overtaken or controlled and he was actively spying on the avengers under pressure from the new secretary of defense del rusk now falcon was able to flip gyrich and gather info on rusk to reveal his true identity as the red skull del rusk get it get it Uh, now del rusk had launched or the red skull had launched a biological warfare attack on the united states and when using the state of panic and disarray to seize control of the american government now ashley Mm -hmm. this is an avengers run came out uh, in the early 2000s called The Red Zone. Do you know who wrote this run? Should I? You know this person. In real life? Uh, um, you've met this person in real life. <laughs> oh boy, now, there, <laughs> now there's extra pressure. Um, I'm going to say that the person who wrote this run was... Oh, Just make a guess. I don't know. Uh, Marv Wolfman. Uh, no, um, <laughs> although Marvelman has written for Marvel, um, this is a person that is uh, typically known as a DC writer, and this is one of his few Marvel works. Uh, Jeff Johns. Oh, dang! I should have known because I knew this was his era. This is Jeff Johns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, it's funny. I was going to say Tom King because I knew that was an even worse swing. Oh yeah. Should have yes, gone yes. more DC next time. Now, due to Sam Wilson's rise and promise in 2004, we saw a miniseries uh, titled Captain America and the Falcon, but it only lasted a year, and then Avengers Disassembled by Brian Michael. Bendis happened and the Scarlet Witch used her ridiculously undefined powers to kill some Avengers. Luckily, uh, Sam uh, didn't kill. Woo! Then, basically, Captain America and Sam had a bit of a falling out and they stopped working together until a new Falcon snuck into a safe house and shot Captain America dead. What? Spoilers, Captain didn't die. He's fine. <laughs> but let's actually talk about the real time that he did. Okay. So it's like the eighth time he's died. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is a, there's a lot of times. So Sam Wilson Falcon had, was working closely with Cap to hunt down and reveal the identity of the Winter Soldier. Hey. And eventually we learned that the Winter Soldier was Bucky Barnes. That Bucky! Is something that we've seen in the Winter Soldier movie. Um, now, Sam Wilson was subsequently the first hero to side with Captain America over the issue of the Superhuman Registration Act and the conflict that would become known as the Civil War. Ashley, what is the comic book version of Civil War? So there is a big event and people get real mad at superheroes. So the government says, hey, superheroes have to register. And Captain America says, heck no. And Iron Man says, heck yes. And then they get a big divorce and they have to divide up their Marvel superhero children. And they punch each other. 
there's then a lot. they fight, and then That's someone it. succeeds That's in it. killing Captain America. Um, so... During this event, Cap's team was basically known as the Secret Avengers. Falcon was the co-leader. And when Cap was incapacitated during a fight between the Avengers and the pro-registration heroes, Sam took charge while Steve recovered. However, during this event, Captain America was arrested and he was assassinated. What? Um, Spoilers. We first thought it was Crossbones. It was later learned to be... Sharon Carter underneath mind control because in Captain America comics, there's a lot of mind control. Usually at the hands of the Red Skull. Cosmic cubes. Let's move on. Now, um, fun fact: Sam was actually one of the pallbearers at Steve Rogers' funeral, oh, that's which I think nice. deservedly so. I agree. Now, Sam Red- Wilson, excuse me, did eventually register with the United States government and was put in charge of Harlem, where he secretly operated with and fed information to. The New Avengers. The New Avengers hey. were the secret anti-registration Avengers team led by Luke Cage. But not the secret Avengers. Just to nope. be really confused. That's actually, uh, the New Avengers is a really great run. This is the start of the Avengers getting so many adjectives in front of them. Yes. Sir. So once the dust had settled, Falcon and Sharon Cotter were teamed up by S.H.I.E.L.D. to investigate Cap's murder. And their work eventually led to the revelation. The relevation, excuse me, that Steve Rogers was actually traveling their dog. What? Just like Batman. What? And they both were published the same year. What? You mean comics is cyclical and everyone knows everyone and that's why storylines get yep. repeated? And uh, Steve Rogers came back to life. Cool. Yeah. Again. Now, uh, Sam Wilson rejoined the Avengers, and then basically it was not long after that that Sam Wilson would become... The new Captain America. <gasps> what? And this would lead to his first solo ongoing series that Sam Wilson ever had. Yeah. Because before then, he's always had Captain America and Falcon. Mm-hmm. Never just Falcon or Sam Wilson. This is Sam Wilson, Captain America, which I hope is the subtitle of Sam Wilson's uh, next movie. Ooh, that would be cool. Just call it Sam Wilson, Captain America. Just call it Falcon Cap. So, oh, <laughs> Lord. Now, um, let's talk about the solo series. So, um, Steve Rogers eventually threw a bunch of comic book shenanigans. Uh, the Super Soldier Serum failed to work, and he became his real age, which is about 95 or so. Yeah, he's so, like the buffest 95-year-old I've ever yep. seen. So, he became old, he had gray hair, and he found out that he couldn't be Captain America. So, he named Sam Wilson as a successor and gave him the shield, and Sam Wilson became the hero that we all like to call Fan... Falcon Cap. I call, I try to call him Fan Cap. Fan Cap. Uh, let's call him Fan Cap now. Falcon <laughs> Cap. Um, so, Falcon Cap divorced himself from S.H.I.E.L.D. and the American government because of ideological differences, and he teams up with Misty Knight and D-Man and creates a hotline where civilians can contact him from his home base in Harlem. And yes, I mean D-Man, the homeless Avenger superhero with a big red bushy beard. And when he showed up in old Avenger storylines, the heroes were like, you smell like the sewer. And he's like, yes, I have been standing in the sewer for nine panel pages for 22 pages an issue for years. That is a joke. To uh, GHL guests, uh, Victoria Male's podcast. Go listen to her episode that I'm on. Your biggest fangirl. There you go. Uh, podcast. There. I have a. I have a whole pitch for a D-Man comic book on that podcast. I will not reveal it here, but it's very sad. But D-Man no longer smells. Actually, he's buffed up. He's on a keto diet, and man, does he look great. All right. Two things. <laughs> uh, when I read this series, the only reason I knew who D-Man was was because of you. You've also talked about him uh, on our podcast. I love in, D-Man. In less. Stands for Demolition Man. By uh, way. Yes, in, in in less detail. Uh, we have a couple requests for D-Man episodes, so it'll maybe never happen. Someday. Nope. Nope. Never um, happen. There's not enough. I will say. I refuse. They draw him <laughs> in this book. He's super hot, oh, and yeah. uh, he really wears like a Wolverine, yeah. Coom original Daredevil knockoff costume. Yeah. So half the time, I'm like, is that? Thick daredevil? <laughs> it's, yeah, my costume <laughs> looks like Wolverine. It does. Like the like my favorite Wolverine, the, the brown and yellow. Yeah, I got pointy tips. Yeah. Um I like him though. He's cool. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't live in the sewers anymore. No, you live in I don't the- smell. Well, debatable. I take showers. Yes. I bathe in Axe Buddy Spray. Ooh. But I'm here. Here's my advice to our listeners under 18. What? Don't bathe in Axe Body Spray. No. Just I mean, put on some nice deodorant and call good, it a day. It's good stuff. <laughs> right here. 
creates a demolition of the, the females, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, boy. What if they're not into females? Well, it creates a demolition of the um, the X-Xs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> let's, uh, let's put D-Man. Is that the correct? I don't know my biology much. Yeah. X, Y, X, X? Is I that what was, it is? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Fountain cap. We just want to make sure that D-Man- Oh, wait a second. Uh, Hold on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Red Wing. Jesus. <laughs> Red Wing knocked off my headphones. <laughs> Maybe next year for Halloween, we'll dress up. We'll finally do. Jason and I, for like two years, have been trying to do Cap and Bucky. <laughs> Maybe next year, we'll do Cap and Bucky, and intern Brago can be Red Wing. Uh, don't, don't, don't make promises that we can't keep. Okay. So, so D Man and Misty Knight join. Uh, Falcon Cap. Yeah, they 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 fight Hydra for a minute, and then they get taken over by a Marvel Comics event called Pleasant Hill, and Civil War Two, and then eventually Steve Rogers is de-aged pretty quickly, and the two air heroes elect to share the mantle of Captain America rather than allowing Sam to earn the trust of the in-universe population and comic book readers. Um, The series eventually leads to Sam being nicknamed Captain Socialism and electing to protect people of color from police prosecution at the hand of a corporation called the Americops and protecting the hacker, the Whisperer, under the auspices of freedom of speech. So there's a lot of real world kind of stuff going into this series. Mm -hmm. Um, Throughout the series, Sam does have a romantic relationship with Misty Knight. Uh, and the series eventually introduces Joaquin Torres, who is a new Falcon, who's somebody I really like. Do you really? I do like the new, I do like Joaquin, the new Falcon. Uh, when Sam Wilson was protecting a group of Mexican immigrants hopping the border, Joaquin was abducted and experimented on, and he was bonded with Red Wing to the point of mutation, giving him bird wings and eyes and inexplicably making him qualified to be a Falcon because he basically was a real Falcon. Um, now, I know Ashley does not like Joaquin. I don't. I think this character's Truly awful. I like Joaquin, but the problem with Joaquin, and I think this is the reason why you think he's terrible, is because he wasn't developed enough. And also, I will, I if will you grant introduce that. a character called Falcon into a series with the, the real Falcon, yeah. we know Sam Wilson is not going to be Captain America forever. So this new Falcon we automatically know has to be get, gotten rid of somehow. So to me, I think if they'd called them anything else Mm -hmm. but falcon we would like this character more that's my argument i think that is absolutely true and absolutely fair i think if this character were an x-man or an inhuman or even just any other dude who got experimented on i don't think i would have an issue with it i think i have an issue with the convenience of he was bonded with red wing and i don't like that red wing picks joaquin over sam to me that rings false especially if you had relationship with an animal before i know we're not telepathically linked but we you know we people with pets we know what that's like we never thought Sam was going to be capped forever. So to no. bring in a replacement like this in this permanent way, I think does feel uh, a little, a little silly. And then there is a period um, like you mentioned where we have two Captain Americas and it was kind of like, and it's like Steve Rogers, Captain America yeah. and, and Sam Wilson. It was kind of like, America. it was kind of like in DC comics where we had two flashes. We had Barry Allen and Wally West and, when you split focus on a t- I don't like it when characters say, let's share the mantle. No, I think that's cheap and I think it lessens the identity. And a lot of the Sam Wilson story deals with Sam really trying to convince the in-universe Marvel residents that he is good enough, that he is worthy, that he is trustworthy. Um, and I think that that mirrors kind of the struggles that um, were happening in among the readers as well to be like, yeah, Sam Wilson should be Captain America. And, and I just think by replacing his other identity of Falcon, excuse me, with Joaquin, I just think on, on sort of every side, you're cutting this really great character off at the knees. It leads to a sort of, I would say, a situation that is currently going on with the Robins, the Robins that are no longer Robins, yes. like Tim Drake. Yes. Well, we've had that discussion ad nauseum. But yes, it sort of leaves you with a, well, who is this character now if he's not Captain America, if he's not Falcon? Exactly. Yeah. Bummer for Sam. Bummer for Sam, indeed. Now, um, what is kind of fun about the story in the story of Joaquin is that Sam suffers a similar mutation and we get the first return of Cap Wolf in contemporary comics. Ashley, 
Do you know about Cap Wolf? You should remember Cap Wolf. Uh, I do because I taught the Captain America lessons. Oh, uh, are you sure you taught the Captain America? Pretty sure I taught the Captain America lessons. I don't know, I don't know about that. I am. I'm like ninety eight percent sure. I don't know. That I, don't I taught the Captain America. Those were episodes America lessons. 112 and one thirteen. They were so long ago. They were in the before. T- I'm pretty sure I taught okay. those. Okay. Um, Captain America turns into a werewolf. Into a werewolf, and it's so, so awesome. Is awesome the word you would use? Yes. It's not the word I would use. Because Sam Wilson turns into a werewolf and becomes the second Cap Wolf. Yeah, but it is something that is beloved by fans, which is why I think and they, made an they, they brought it back. Um, in my opinion, it lasts for three issues. That is too many issues. It is. Um, but it was a cute, it's a cute nod back to a classic piece of Captain America lore. Yes. Now, uh, eventually, the evil white people of the Marvel Universe hated Falcon Cap so much that Captain America, who at this point, had been turned into an evil fascist by a cosmic cube masquerading as a four-year-old girl named Cubic, or Kobic, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Kobic markers. Um, they eventually uh, teamed up with a bunch of corrupt, powerful white dudes and U.S. agent to literally ruin Sam's life. And it leads into the event called Secret Empire, which I think is quite terrible, where Captain America is a Nazi until we learn that no... There's a dream version of Captain America who's not a Nazi, and he's been inside the whole time, and he comes out, and he fights Nazi Captain America, and now there are two Steve Rogers in the Marvel Universe, and it's quite confusing. Boo! Remember when I said we don't need two versions of the same character? Yeah, well, I'm going to throw this out there. This exemplifies why. If you like Secret Empire out there... Um, if you like something that we don't like, that's fine. uh, It's fine. No, it's totally fine, Um, but I think uh, turning Captain America into a Nazi means that you literally don't understand... The purpose of Captain America. So I'm just going to move on. It's funny because the writer who did that is the same person who wrote the uh, Falcon Cap series. Yes, Thanks, Nick Spencer. And the Falcon Cap series, I think, is really quite good. Uh, action figure <laughs> spotlight here. We're going on here. Oh boy, uh, I didn't know if we were getting one of these. Oh this episode. hell yeah, we're doing an action figure spotlight. <laughs> Ashley, um, this is an action figure spotlight that is close to your heart. Ooh, tell me now. Me. Back in the day. I think of 2016. Uh, <laughs> we were like three years into the podcast of 2016. Toys R Us <laughs> uh, made R- a three-pack Marvel uh, Legends. I have wanted six, this for let me, so long. Six-inch pack where it had three action figures in it. Yes. It had all new, all different vision. Yes. It had Kate Bishop Hawkeye. Yes, it did. And then the third figure was Sam Wilson, Captain America. Yes. And I don't know about you, I love the design of Sam Wilson, Captain America. Falcon Cap, in my opinion, is one of the all-time great modern comic costume designs. Yep. So Ashley will... piece is stupid. Ashley will share a picture of this action figure on there. In a link uh, if you want to pick it up. Um, And I just want to say that if you want to make Ashley's Christmas and you have this (laughs) three-pack, oh my God. Or any of the figures in it. I own none of them. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can send it to me for Diwali. You can send it to me for Ramadan. You can send it to me for Hanukkah. Whatever holiday you like, uh, Yule, I'll, I'll, I'll take them. P.O. Box 16429. Uh, all right. So before we move on, I want to talk about, uh, I want to have this conversation here. Mm. I want to talk about Sam Wilson as Captain America. We knew it was, yes. wasn't going to be permanent, but it wasn't for very long. Um, I also, there's another person out there that was also Captain America, replacement Cap, uh, Bucky Wilson. Mm-hmm. That's a, no, no, Bucky Wilson. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Bucky there Barnes. Is a fu- there is a fanfic somewhere, I'm sure, Bucky where Wilson. he is called Bucky Wilson. Sure. Um, <laughs> Bacan. Oh, um, boy. Anyways. So. No, they call it Falcon Soldier, I'm sure. James Buchanan Barnes. Yes. Was also Captain America. My sweet baby. He was Captain America. Do you want to make a guess? How long, how many issues of the main Captain America title do you think? Because oh, I have. 50. Seven. That's Is that your two, guess? That's too many. Yeah. Incorrect. Thirty-five. Ah, uh, Sam. They okay. So Steve. Do you know the number for Steve Sam? Steve gets. Steve gets youngified again in issue eight or nine. It's less than ten issues of Sam before Steve. Before they're like, we'll both be Captain America. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. How many issues does Sam get as a title called Captain America? Twenty-five. Pretty close. Twenty-four. Mm. So, in actuality, um, Sam is only Captain America 12, uh, excuse me, 10 issues less than Bucky. Oh, interesting. Because so, so it feels so much less to me. It does. It feels like Sam was only Captain America for like six months. No, he was Captain America for almost, well, okay, this is all new Marvel now. <laughs> so yes. he all 24 issues probably came out in the same year but he got he got 
two years of comic books. Interesting. Bucky so, got two and a half. So that is very interesting. I wonder if that's because when Bucky is Captain America, there's really no discussion about are you good enough? Because Sam's because Captain America's dead. Every, Steve's dead. And everyone is just like, no, you're Bucky. Of course you're good enough. Yeah. But again, the discourse around Sam... Um, which we're not going to pretend is not racially charged. Yeah, is, it's very is, racially is all charged. about yeah. like hashtag not my cap, Captain Socialism. In a, the, um, in the, is he good enough? And in the book, I think there's a hashtag. It's like put down the shield or Give something like that. Give back the shield. Give back the shield. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if that's why, because with Bucky, there's very little proving ground, even though he straight up murderizes so many people He's an for assassin. quite a while. Bucky like, is like, a murderer. But if, if you're sort of like doing a point system and looking at the columns, Sam is a way better option. Yes. Um, you know, if you're looking for like straight heroics pure of heart kind of thing um that's very interesting thank you for bringing that to my attention i'm going to be thinking about that for a minute i we, i wanted to point that out because again he's not captain america for for i kind of think that part of the reason why um the double shipping is definitely a part of the it. double issues part shipping is part of that but i also think it's part it is a little racially charged mm-hmm. and i also think it's a little bit of the subject matter that sam wilson's uh writer nick spencer decided to take on because bucky's run is simply him just being captain america and him trying to be a good guy yeah whereas sam wilson's is very much it is a he does take on social issues and social things mm-hmm. and as we know um in comic books there is a whole section of the audience that does not think that comic books have been about social issues, even though Superman in his very first year in 1938 um, dealt with politics. Well, I'll also <laughs> add on to that. If you think that pop culture hasn't been dealing with politics and social issues since from the very beginning, I just, I don't know where to start. With. I, 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 <laughs> Go read know. Dr. Faustus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, so I just want to point that out to you. You can request people's. a Christopher Marlowe episode. <laughs> Please never do. Um, so that's an interesting thing. I mean, I like Sam Wilson as Captain America. I so thought, do I. And, I. and I like his solo series. I think it, it, for the most part, I think it's a really fun read. Yeah. Really good read. And I he's got a great costume. I, I think he'll be Captain America. again. We're going to get him back in the cap in the Captain America title. When the movie comes out, if not when the TV series comes out. Well, I mean, because Marvel loves that cross branding, and now Kevin Feige's in this new position, right, where he has dominion over all. Well, things. that's a fun thing because our, um, as you know, we have a Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Jawin J A W I I N, and every single week we do an extra episode, Geek History Lesson Extra, where it's an extra twenty minutes on the subject that we're talking about. Guys, we've done over a hundred. Geek History Lesson That's Extra crazy. episodes. There are there are over a hundred of these episodes. They're all on the Patreon. You can all listen to them. And if you go over there and support the podcast, you really help the Mind University out and you keep this podcast going. We've said it several times. We've never lied about it. The Patreon is what keeps this podcast alive. A thousand percent. Um, without the Patreon, we would we would we would not be doing this podcast anymore just because we wouldn't have the time for the research. Yeah. So we yeah. thank all our patrons. Uh, and if you even a dollar helps, but our Geek History Lesson Extra episode this week. Is our predictions for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier Disney Plus show and kind of the Falcon and the MCU going forward. Hey. And I have some thoughts. Cool. I have uh, some thoughts about what they're going to do with old Sam Wilson. Old Sammy boy. Old Sammy boy. And I'm telling you, I, I think I, I have a three movie arc here. I think that they're going to do. I think oh they're going to do it. Um, um, also, if you've listened to any of those episodes or any of our pitches, Jason often gets things right. So if you're interested in what that series might be. My look uh, like, World uh, War Hulk pitch is pretty damn badass. Yeah, uh, I came I'll up with that, with that. I came up with that on the spot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, be sure and check that out. It's like I should be working in television or something. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay. Uh, but I want to remind everybody out there that supports some of the Patreon. Thank you so much for doing that that's enough of that patreon.com slash jaw when j-a-w-i-i-n ashley let's move into the recommended reading yes let's where oh, that's it with the lesson i, I should I make that clear yeah that's probably it. that's it with the lesson <laughs> yeah yeah we don't want to spoil anything that's too too modern sure uh if you liked this if you want to read more about sam wilson or see any of the uh, more prominent storylines go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading you click on the little amazon widget you buy the stories that you're interested in and a little bit of support comes back our way at no extra cost to you to help keep us in Falcon Cap cosplay. All right. So the first pick is Marvel Masterworks Captain America Volume 4. That features the first appearance of Sam Wilson, where his bird gets named before he does. Nice. Uh, The next one is Captain America Sam Wilson Volume 1. 
colon, not my Captain America. That is the Nick Spencer series. That is the Falcon Cap costume. I think it's a great read. The third choice, actually four choices for you That's today. Okay. The third choice is Mad Bomb because it's, yeah, so, there we go. <laughs> it's so bonkers. You have to read it. I gave this out of uh, print trade. There's a giant omnibus of Captain America, Jack Kirby, if you want to go even crazier. And then we didn't talk about this story at all. But I wanted to put it in here because a lot of people know the Captain America and the Falcon Secret Empire paperback. Now, this is the classic Secret Empire Hydra storyline, and Falcon's a big part of it. And I think if you're interested in Captain America and Falcon stories, I think you should definitely check it out. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, also, I want to point out um, my book, Super Soldiers, which is on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target right now, uh, where I, Jason Inman, talk about my military career through the veil of superheroes. I do briefly mention Falcon and talk a lot about Captain America in there. So, um, Captain America being your first chapter, in fact. Captain America is my very first chapter. So if you're interested in that, I'd head on over to Amazon.com and pick up a copy of my book, Super Soldiers, a salute to the heroes and villains that fought for our country. Nice, 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 nice. Um, real quickly, mm-hmm. we talked about this a little briefly. Yeah. Sam Wilson, better cinematic Captain America than Bucky Barnes? Better choice for the new Captain America? Um, I think definitely a better choice for that world. I definitely think so. And I think because Marvel Studios is definitely doing a lot of backpedaling and a lot of sorry for 22 movies of only men and sorry for 18 movies of only white guys, um, I think he's a really excellent choice. And I think Anthony Mackie's a great actor. So I am pleased. How about you? I agree. It's the right choice. Yeah. All right. Let's move into a section of the podcast that I don't think should exist anymore, but I did it anyway. Good The for you. teaching tweet. Please go to Twitter at GHL Podcast and tell me if you want to get rid of this section of the podcast like I do. Ashley's keeping me keep it. Yes. What is the teaching tweet, Ashley? The teaching tweet is when in 140 characters or less, because we're old school. Antiquated. Professor Jason is going to sum up everything that you need to know about Sam Wilson. And we will be tweeting it at 3 p.m. PSD, the Tuesday this episode. Oh, you have a specific time? Yeah, because I schedule everything. Oh, cool. All right. (laughs) Here we go. Okay. Sam Wilson. He's the best friend. The Birdman, the best replacement, the bro dude leader of the Avenger, bird speak, hashtag, caca. There you go. I don't know how to spell any of that. I wrote it all down. It's all Thank good. you. And now we're going to move into the final section of the podcast, the final before the final section. Hashtag stick around at the very end of the podcast. Uh, the honor roll. Yes, where it, which is if you go to Apple Podcasts and you leave us five stars, we will read whatever you write. If you are an international listener, take a beautiful screenshot, email it to us, geekhistorylesson at gmail.com. Let us know where you're from, and we will also read those because we love oh our international students. I'm so excited. All right, Jason, I am who's very joining excited us today? For the first one, they have an international review right here. I love that this was emailed to us as an international review from Australia. Sorry, Jason, not from Perth. <laughs> yeah, because Jason's been screaming at Perth for like Look, months now. I can see yeah. our <laughs> analytics. We have a big contingent of Perth listeners. So one of you have got to hear this and email us for God's sake. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Plus, I, I, we need a couch to sleep on when we come to Perth, Australia. Absolutely. We're, we're going to come. Yeah. Someday. I hope uh, so. But we have an amazing um, Aussie here, Nathan the M-Word McKenzie, who says the highlight of my day. And he says, as a Superman fan growing up as a kid, and since MCU changed everything, I knew about the world of comic book superheroes. I've become a massive fan of both DC and Marvel, and there is no better way to understand the characters than listening to your podcast. I have a basic knowledge of who is who in both worlds, but there is no better way to get to know everything about all the characters than listening to Geek history lesson. Jason and Ashley are amazing. Look forward to listening to the podcast every time there is a new episode. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Nathan. That's awesome. And then then hello to our listeners across the pond like Nathan in Australia, including the ones in Perth. Yes, please let us know if you have a couch or a guest room. Thank you. Now here is the Americanos, as I like to call them. The domestics. Uh, This comes from Juan Cho 214 who says, awesome podcast. I don't know what that word was. Awesome podcast. (laughs) 
I love the list, the guests, and of course, the history of the characters. I started listening in 2017, and best believe I have heard every podcast. You guys make my Mondays great. I'm so glad your voices don't annoy slash bore me. Me too, Juan. Me oh, too. man. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> next you. one comes from Madeline4475, who says, I have been listening to Jason and Ashley's podcast for a few years now and continue to look forward to every new episode. Especially love Ashley's perspective as part of the often missing voices of female fans and geeks communities uh, heart emoji thank you madeline p.s i would love an episode about my favorite comic book character marvel's sarah s-e-r-a the transgender girlfriend of color of angela Lo- uh, angela who is now loki and thor's sister yes i did add sarah to our list so whenever asgard gets to something big uh we will definitely consider it thank and the final you. review comes from joshy god who says, no, it's not listening in on some boring class, but two great hosts schooling us on anything cool in pop culture. A must listen. So Thank jo- you. So Joshy God, Madeline4475, Wancho214, and Nathan McKenzie, thank you for joining the honor roll. You have been given keys to the teacher's lounge, and in the corner, there are a bunch of post-it notes put there from Mr. Belvedere. What does uh, Mr. Belvedere teach? Ancient British dining interesting yes now don't forget guys go over to itunes leave us a five-star review we'll read it on the podcast while you're over there you can also subscribe to the podcast hey don't forget we're on spotify you listen to spotify you can find us on spotify we're also on a lot of places like stitcher and cool places like that and actually if they want to suggest a lesson kind of like the cool person andrew lewis louis perry mm-hmm. uh where can they do that well if you would like to be like uh mr perry you can do that at geekhistorylesson.com facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson or on twitter at ghl podcast there's like a gazillion ways to contact us in all of those places uh don't forget to follow me on twitter and instagram at jawin j-a-w-i-i-n you can follow ashley on Instagram and Twitter at Ashley V Robinson and do not forget guys from November 1st to November 30th the Jawin comic drive for service members we're having a big kickoff event at Collector's Paradise in North Hollywood the weekend of November 9th from noon to five we will tell you what what day whether it's going to be the Saturday or Sunday we don't know please come by say hi yeah um, hashtag stick around the section where we see if you stuck through our plugs uh, let's talk about the Falcon cap suit Okay. We talked about that a little bit before. Yeah. Talk about it, Ashley. How awesome is it? It's pretty awesome. I do think the headpiece is silly. It's one of those Wally West headpieces where your hair is I love the goggles, the though. The, top. the red goggles. Do you think it would be really hard to see when you took them off? What does that mean? Have you ever put on ski goggles? Yeah. You know, because they're orange tinted. When you take it off, everything is blue. Sure. Do you think when you take off red goggles, everything is green? Like the opposite end of the color wheel? Let's say yes. I just imagine that looking through red lenses would give you a headache because, you know, because red is really hard on your brain. I think his headpiece is the cap costume is way better looking than his dopey little gold shield thing that he has on his head in his Falcon costume. Just say that. Do you think that the Falcon costume is uh, in need of an update? Oh, yes. Because <laughs> the classic Falcon costume. It's real bad. The classic the green Falcon one? costume. Um, the green one. I don't like even I I don't like any of the Falcon costumes. Even the the modern black and red one really? they made. Really? Don't like a single one. Because to one me of them. Falcon cap is so obviously um based off of the red and white Falcon suit. Sure. But adding the blue to it really Helps. seems to modernize and it. The and star. Then, and um with Captain America they ha- they always have the stripes around the middle which which really like slims a character up even though they're all incredibly fit. I, yeah, I just think it's incredibly incredibly well designed. It is. That's why it makes a great looking action figure. Action figure spotlight. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, uh, thank you everybody for listening. That is it for the podcast. I am Jason Kaka Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Okay, sure. Uh, thank you. So, Oh, here comes Red Wing. I couldn't have said it better, Red Wing. <laughs>